My special guest this evening on the program is Bruce Bailey, film critic for the Montreal Gazette. Welcome to the show, Bruce. Thanks very much. A lot of people read film reviews and we get different things from them. I personally use them as a barometer. I can uh, get a good idea of what I'm going to see, whether uh, I want to spend the four fifty or five dollars for the movie that's coming up. But I always wondered about film critics and I always wondered what the process is that you go through when you're preparing to go for a film, for example. You, you hear about it, you know who's in it. Do you ever form opinions in advance? I have some idea of what the film will be like, usually. Um, other critics have written on the film before. Often uh, there have been articles on it. I have some idea from reading trade publications how the film was made. I know what kind of care went into certain films. I know what the budget is. Uh, I try not to let those things have any real bearing on my own opinion. Uh, it's an information gathering process. Uh, once I have that together, um, our job at the Gazette, I think, is to inform the public about the basic things that are in the film. Uh, the average person wants to know what's the story and uh, who's in the film. Right? It's more fun for me to express, to express an opinion in a very complicated technical way, but that's not my job. If there's some space left over, then I fool around with that. But the average person wants to know, is it worth my $4 or $5? And exactly. that's what I try to do. Now, you t obviously try to go in with as, as, as open a mind as possible. Do you see the film in a private screening, or do you see it when it comes out for the general public? In most cases, it's a private screening, uh, which is not ideal always. Uh, if it's a children's film, for example, it's better to be in a theater with kids. Right, it's very hard for me to make a judgment on a Walt Disney cartoon. It's right. good to see the reaction in it. Oh, way. yeah, absolutely. So in most cases, with, with that kind of stuff, uh, I'll delay the review. I'll take the time to go and see what kids think about the film. Do you bring a pad of paper with you? Do you take notes? Uh, yeah, I, I take uh, a ridiculous amount of notes. Uh, I have... Uh, fear, I guess, of not being able to have something to say. I always do, and I hardly ever look at the notes, but in fact it's pages and pages. What do you look for first? Do you look at the acting? Do you look at the cinematography? Do you look at the storyline? Well, I look at different things for the public and for myself. As far as I'm concerned, the films that I like personally are the films that make some kind of a breakthrough, do something different that hasn't been done before. All right. At the same time, I've got to keep in mind that, that uh, I'm writing for a mass circulation newspaper, and the average person doesn't really care, probably, if this is some kind of uh, avant-garde breakthrough. They want to know what's it like, what's the story like. Um, so in a case like Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was the big film this uh, last summer, uh, there's nothing uh, particularly experimental about the film, but it's it's fast moving, it's exciting, it's extremely well cut. Uh, it has a great flair for adventure and romance. That's the kind of film which I recommend, even though, as far as I'm concerned, it's been done uh, dozens and dozens of times before. Uh, it's not just me going to the movies, it's the general public when I go. I try to take them with me, in a sense. It's a well-worked formula, in other words, but uh, it, it does have its moments. What kind of films does Bruce Bailey like? I like films that, that use f film as film, or films that couldn't be anything else. Um, a good example would be a Sergio Leone film, like Once Upon a Time in the West. Now that's, that's what, two hours and 45 minutes long, and there's maybe 20, 25 lines of dialogue. And it plays with music, a repetitive theme. It plays with uh, uh, people's faces. It tells the story. Uh, with the camera, uh, a film like Blow Up, it's a, the same sort of thing. It's based on a very obscure, uh, avant-garde uh, short story. But the film, the same sort of thing. It's an hour and a half or so of uh, someone using the camera very well to tell a very interesting, bizarre story. Um, I also like uh, the kinds of films most people like at the same time. But the ones that really amaze me are the ones that uh, make some kind of a breakthrough or use the camera really well. What kind of reaction do you get from, from your readers when they write in? Do they uh, agree <laughs> with uh, what you say basically or do you get some pretty uh, heavy letters? 
I think that people tend uh, to react negatively when they take the time to write a letter. If, if I, uh, I, the response I get uh, sometimes is pretty vitriolic. People get quite upset. Um, there are certain kinds of films which I tend not to like, uh, car crash films, for example. I try to be fair. I try to say, I don't like this film, but if you like car crash films, then go see this film. But the fact that I mentioned that I didn't like it tends to elicit a lot of mail. You know, like what do you mean? Cannonball Run, was that a... Cannonball example? Run's a good example of a film that brought a lot of mail. People got very upset about that. The other film that brought the most mail in the past two years was a film called uh, uh, Picnic and Hanging Rock, which I happen to like a lot. But uh, that brought just piles of mail from people that thought it was a, the most wonderful film they'd ever seen, and thank you for saying it was good, and piles saying this is one of the most boring, pretentious films I ever saw. You know, it, you get a big response. O also, telephone calls. A lot of them are sort of crank calls, but uh, a certain number <laughs> are well reasoned. <laughs> you know. Right. This past summer was uh, just an incredible summer for films. Everyone enjoyed yeah. themselves, and the theater owners were, uh, were not complaining for once in a long time and saying they had a very good summer. And uh, the films that stand out, you were talking about Raiders of the Lost Ark and Superman too. What about Superman too? How did you view that film? Well, I enjoyed it. It's not my favorite film, but uh, I thought it was an improvement over uh, Superman 1. It, it didn't take itself so seriously. Um, it, it has really big mass appeal, and, and so does Raiders. Uh, they were both godsends as far as Hollywood was concerned, which began to panic around March, April. Receipts had fallen off drastically. They were down 11% from the previous year, but the summer just worked magic. It was a marvelous summer for uh, the studios. What about films like that that come out in one part, two parts, three parts, and uh, and uh, keep coming at you. I understand Raiders of the Lost Ark is, is going to be heard from again, the same cast, another That's film. That's right. I find the whole business kind of annoying. I mean, there are so many millions of ideas in the world. I, I don't particularly look kindly upon sequels. That doesn't mean I want to go in and pan a sequel. I didn't pan Superman 2. But uh, it's getting a bit ridiculous. Uh, you know, Rocky 2, go, maybe go into Rocky 3. Superman 3 is already uh, being set up. Superman 4 is projected. Of course, you know, uh, uh, the Star Wars series is going to run us nine films, finally. Uh, they're just more subjects, you know. I'm getting a bit tired of sequels. Are, are they doing <laughs> this because they know they have an established audience for this? The first one was a success, and therefore let's reload them with another one? Is that the basic...? Exactly. There's a phenomenal amount of money at stake. Uh, uh, the people in Hollywood don't want to take chances. Uh, if you'd read uh, Pauline Kael's article on the subject, it, it's quite explicit about the idea that these guys, the producers, could be selling mattresses, they could be selling toothpaste, it doesn't matter. They're not concerned about the artistic quality, they're concerned about making money, and there's a lot of people there. It's their job to make that money back for the backers. And so uh, we're going to see more and more sequels, I suspect. They're, they're, they've got a guaranteed audience. Another thing that people are talking about these days is the uh, VTR, the home videos, and the uh, uh, video discs, and all this kind of equipment that's coming out. And more and more people are buying them, even though they're pretty highly priced these days. Do you feel that this will make any dent on the uh, movie-going public, on the receipts at the box office? Are more people staying home? It'll make a dent at the box office, um, but it may be a boon, and I say it may be a boon for the film industry, particularly here. If some of these uh, pay TV networks get going, they'll provide some of the backing for these films. The problem with this kind of industry, which is geared to the home box office system, is that uh, the, the kind of films you're going to be able to put out will be geared to a much more uh, TV-oriented taste, a much, a much blander kind of taste. Um, they won't be so adventurous. There'll be films which are being marketed for the TV market because there's where you're going to make your money. It's bound to cut into box office receipts at the, the uh, film uh, theaters. Personally, I find I enjoy going to a movie. I enjoy the big screen. And I can enjoy sitting at home and watching a movie. But if it's a comedy, you were talking about uh, some of the kiddie movies, and when you mm -hmm. review them, you'd rather have the kids in the audience. 
It's the same to me with a comedy. I sit at home and I miss the laughter of the people sure. around me. It, it detracts from the film. Sure, it's, it's much more fun. I think what we've done now is we've lost the sense of how much fun it is to go to the movies, what kind of event it is. You go to the movies and you stand in line and you have a chat and you eat some popcorn and go to a restaurant afterwards or for a drink or something. It's a whole big ritual. It's an outing, it's an All event. Right. All right.